Hey, St. Luke, St. Luke family, St. Luke friends, this is the day God's made. Let God made a day just for you. That's for me. The chilly where I am, but God made the day to give me an opportunity to give him praise. And I think I'm thankful to get this opportunity. Say, Lord, I show you thank you for goodness and mercy I didn't earn and don't deserve. It's time to uh, to pray, and we're going to do a word. Um, but I want you to remember those people. Remember, um, we we in our in the comfort of our home, and some of us may think our home is not so comfortable. Um, we have problems. We experience difficulties and situations. Um, but if you compare that to being bombed and bombed and, and, and bombed again, and compare that to having no food and people starving around you and no help from outside and being bombed like the Palestinians. A caught between what a, what is two got to be two evil forces, neither caring about those people who are dying between them. When you think about the comfort you live in, and compared to that, you live in great comfort. In other areas, Africa, Yemen, Ukraine, even areas of poverty in India, your comfort shines. And it's not because you're better than they are. It's not because you act better, do better, serve God better, love God better. None of those things or treat your fellow man better. It's none of those things. This is a graceful place that we're in. And it's not perfect. But it ought to give us a reason to care for those who are not faring, doing as well as we are. And when God gives us opportunity to help, and when we can't physically help, it's shameful that we don't pray because we have um, our idiosyncrasies about their humanity. They're human, just like us. They may be serve other from other faith traditions. They're human, just like us, and they deserve us to talk to our Father about about them as well in prayer so let's go let's 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 pray and thank you god let's pray and then we'll look at a word and just for this evening small word i won't hold you long in your homes i won't hold you long i'm thankful to be able to come to your homes but when you think about it and you, when you lay your situation up against some of the situations happening in the world. I understand there was a earthquake somewhere, Taiwan area. Don't haven't gotten the reports on how many, if there were any lives lost. But we need to be thankful. Thank you, God. Some of our troubles are not troubled at all. Comparatively speaking, we need to be thankful. Father, we enter your presence. God, thank you. Thank you. You are good, good. God, a great Father. We bow before you humble, knowing that we don't deserve any of your blessings. And none of your benefits toward us. We have not earned any of your favor. It's just been you bestowing grace upon each of us over and over again. Thank you, Father, not holding against us some of the stuff we hold against ourselves and others hold against us. Thank you, Father. Help us to be faithful enough to know that you love us enough that if we come through the throne, to the throne of grace, with confidence you're just and you'll bless us God 
We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word, God. Guide us by your word. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, your personality. Your personality that's reflected in Jesus so that we, like Jesus, can draw people to us. Help, help us not be the kind of people who don't want certain folk around us. Help us to stand in a way that we draw people. People who have needs, people who need help, that we're able to draw people and be able to be a blessing to people. Bestow upon us the resources and the wisdom to be a blessing to others. God, we thank you. We thank you for all our elders, those who are sick among us, God, name by name. I pray you lay your healing hands on them in the name of Jesus as only you can. In Jesus, we know that you are able to touch, heal, and deliver. Do it, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. To each sick member, each one struggling, God, I pray that you bind cancer and diabetes and high blood pressure and heart problems, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I pray for our families, our, our young families, and our uh, more not so young family, all of our families, God, I pray for marriages in particular. God, I hope and pray that we need you, Father, to place the love between those individuals that need to be there to raise healthy families and care one for another. God, I pray victory in the families now in, in Jesus, in Jesus' name. Have thine way, God. Have your way for those who have no shelter and no food seem like no one who care God if you show us we'll reach out in your name we'll give you glory by being a hand to those who need a hand now God I just say thank you now give you glory honor and praise God I pray that you forgive us for our sin and we know that we have to forgive others so forgive us our sin as we forgive others and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For you are the kingdom, the power, and the glory in Jesus' name. God, I pray for those who, whose mind are unstable. I pray for those whose hearts are, are, are unstable, God. You are heart fixer. And a mind regulator, God, do it in the name of Jesus. I pray for those parents who've lost children, babies, their babies, God. And found it hard to not just maintain faith, but to stay faithful. Who, who can't answer the question on where you, were you when that baby, when that child was taken on. Why you didn't stop it, God? As we believe that you can. Why? Why? God, I pray for the, pray for those souls. There's nothing um, that I can imagine more hurtful and harmful, God. I know you know your son died. So, God, I pray that you, this is a bigger job than any pastor, any counselor, any psychiatrist, psychologist can do, God. God, I pray that you will enter that space of hurt, disappointment, agony. Let them feel you right there. Let them know you right there. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, bless the word. Bless the word. Bless this word. We'll give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Sunday, uh, we talked about, it was out of John chapter um, 20, verse 29, I believe, where Thomas had said that he would not believe Jesus had been resurrected unless he could put his hands in the side and his fingers where they spiked him, something on that line. And, and he, he told his fellow disciples that I don't believe y'all. They said, we've seen the Christ. He said, we, I don't believe y'all. I don't believe y'all. And, and, and he says, I'm going to need some evidence uh, that that he's risen. And this is what I, I have to do. I won't believe unless. And Jesus shows up 
uh, in a second appearance there in John chapter 20 and says Peter says to Thomas Thomas come on put your hand in come on touch and Thomas says my Lord and, and my God Jesus says because you have seen me you didn't even touch you didn't even put your hands in you didn't you, you just seen me and you believe says to him therefore blessed are those that believe though they have not seen blessed are those that believe they've not seen they not were not there as Thomas was when he raised Lazarus from the dead they were not there as Thomas was when he took two fish five barley loaves and fed multitude they were not there as Thomas was when he the woman touched the hem of his garments and was healed they, they weren't there when by Bartimaeus received his sight but Thomas was there Thomas was there when he made a clay of mud and placed it on the blind man's eyes. When he told the man who lay on his bedding, on his pallet, take up thy bed and walk. Thomas was there when the forces of nature, the wind, the lightning, the roaring waves threatened their very lives, and he spoke to it and said, Peace, be still. Thomas was there. We, we weren't there, but Thomas was there. Yet when it came down to his ability to rise, raise, be raised from the dead, Thomas doubted. To you and I, looking on the situation, maybe it seems that what's wrong with Thomas? How could Thomas? see all of that and then when the disciples said to him we've seen the Christ he said uh -uh, I don't believe y'all and it's the Bible says that that's what Thomas says and we with all the information he has previously we wonder why I said this and it may not be called be because he doubted Jesus. It may be that he doubted his fellow disciples, and there was reason for that. But this evening, in that setting, around that setting in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, something happens. Thomas sees, he believes, Jesus says. You blessed are those, favored are those who believe I rose from the dead, yet they have not, have not seen. So often believers will say to me, they get it. We believe Jesus died and paid for our sin. They get it. We believe Jesus rose to justify. They get it. We believe Jesus sitting down at the right hand of the Father. He's our lawyer on retainer in the event that we violate the kingdom laws and sin. He's there representing us guilty sinners with his blood. They get it. One of the things over my years of ministry that seem to perplex people as it relates to what's my next step. I get it. What's my next step? I thought I'd come close to the resurrections and hear what Jesus tell those who finally get it, what they are to do with it. And in every gospel, in, in, the, in the 28th chapter of Matthew, uh, verse 16 through 20, you read in the King James, it says, the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. 
Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That's what Matthew says. Mark, or that's how Matthew reads. In Mark chapter 16, verse 14 to 18, he says this. So afterward he appeared unto eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and heart, hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpent. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And the sick shall recover. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance of and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. So that's the three synoptic gospels. What does John say? John reads in chapter 20, 21, 23. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye. The Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. In, in the ministry, the years I've been in, one of the things uh, that people struggle with after they get it, they become believers, they get it, is what am I to do? What 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 what's my gift, Rev? Um, I don't know what I'm supposed. God wants me to do something. I don't know what He wants me to do, and they mean that genuinely and they're sincere about uh, what what can they do, uh, what their gift is, and be be careful with people because I believe that God's assignments come on a spiritual platform. Directed to you, especially when the assignments of specificity. Generally speaking, it's written. Jesus says in all four of these texts, go tell, go witness, go tell about the good news of what Christ has done. It is our responsibility. Can I just use that for a subject? Our responsibility to tell about Christ. It's our responsibility to tell about Christ. We get ample opportunity, but do we tell? This is the commission, the great commission that they call primarily used in most circles is Matthew, uh, Matthew's gospel in chapter 28. Baptize and teach men to observe all that's true. But I think it's important that we take the general message of Jesus and we practice and participate in the practice of telling people about Christ. I am not envious of, of athletic people or people who enjoy sports or people who follow sports and some follow it more than they do relig their religion. And I know for myself, especially among brothers, that we have a better conversation, a more accurate conversation, a deeper conversation about the sports of our choice than we do about 
he who chose to save us. And it's easier for us, not just to talk, but we talk, we brag, and in long conversations about those things. And I'm not down in that. But are we able to have an informed, and that's, that's the other thing, you know, when it comes down to those areas of athletics that we choose to follow, well, it's golf, basketball, football, but whatever it is we choose to follow, or uh, some of us do all of it, wrestling, whatever. We know specific, we know names, we know weights, we know how fast a person could do a hundred yard meter, and there's nothing wrong with all of that. Nothing. But the question is, can you pull your witness for Christ alongside your witness for that? And I'm just all I'm talking about. And there are other things. I don't have to jump. Just jump on, on the men about that. We can jump on. We can. We can. We, and that's not what I'm doing. This is just raising your awareness. Uh, if God is a jealous God, and He blesses you to sleep and wake up in peace and prosperity protects you and keeps you and brought you safe this far. And that stranger you've never met, but you studied that stranger and that stranger's uh, matriculation, and you're willing to talk about it on every corner, on every stop, every, everything. But when it comes down to about what Christ has done for us, how, how informed, help me write that Holy Ghost. How informed is our conversation when it comes down to the word of God and the ways of God and the ways that God has instructed us that ought to be, be our ways? It's, 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 it, there should be no competition. God is a top shelf item. If he's not on your top shelf, he's not on your in your lane. He, if he's not on the top shelf, he's not in your your store. If you're not on the top shelf, God is a top shelf commodity. In fact, God is the only thing on God. He's a, he operates solo. There's no competition or there should be no competition with God because no one, none of us can, nothing can compete with God because all the other stuff will fall away and fail. But God will still be on the top shelf. And we, as his believers, we as his followers, have the responsibility to not just put it in and be on the top shelf, but let folk know where he is in our life. Not only by our words, but by our deeds and by our actions, by our commitment to things that represent his holiness. I'm going to say that again because it, by our commitment, the things that symbolize and represent his holiness and his presence. That ought to be top shelf stuff. Jesus had been resurrected in all four of these uh, areas of reading, biblical reading. And he says different stuff uh, to all of them. So, so this, 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 this. He, he he says, we'll notice in Matthew, he instructed them to go to Galilee. And Galilee is not a prominent place. Galilee is where uh, the dead beat, the low life, the poor, the struggling. He, this is the urban area. Doesn't get much attention except police. He said, go to Galilee. You're going to see me. In Galilee, you'll see me at work, and you'll see me in Galilee. You, you'll see, you'll see me in Galilee. Come on in Galilee, where the needs are, and you'll you'll see me in Galilee. And when uh, Jesus um, meets them there in Galilee, they worship him. They, they worship him, and the book says they worship him. But in Galilee, some doubt it as well, and and Jesus. Uh, lets them know all power is given to him. And he tells them, go teach, uh, baptize, and do it in the name of the Father. There's a lesson there. We don't, we don't witness because we want people to see us. We don't witness because we want people to look up to us. We, we don't witness looking down on people. But when we witness, 
we witness so the name of God can be glorified, lifted, and revealed. We, we, don't, we, we don't witness so when we leave, people can say they, they're sure some good people. We, that's not what we're witnessing for. That's not what we're out there for. We'll then um, light shine. We're doing our good work so, uh, so men can see our good works and, and glorify the Father. And, and that's one of the problems, I believe, in people not saying anything about Christ. And plus, I think um, people like to um, let me know that um, they, they, they differ with me. That's okay. That's okay. People, people don't want to bleed. People want to think I'm a self-righteous. And, but that's depending on the way we approach. We got to have the proper approach. See, whenever we go to someone or to witness or we're given the opportunity to witness, we witness out of humility. Because we know that were it not for the grace of God, we, we could be where someone else is. We are evidence of God's grace and goodness and we are ought to be able to operate out of that reality to others were it not for the grace of god i'd be in fact i once was so our, our responsibility we have a responsibility to tell people about jesus because jesus told us to after the resurrection. He go, told us to, wherever we go, take the opportunity, whenever given the opportunity, people compliment you, you compliment Jesus. It might turn somebody off. Give, give, thank you, Lord. People say to me, you know, uh, whatever they say that, that may be something to pump your head up, tell them we just give God the glory. You sure did speak well. We give God all the glory. Just keep praying for me. We thank God for him using me. Give God the glory. How do, you, how do you get such a, by the grace of God, by the grace of God? Doesn't mean you didn't plan. Doesn't mean you didn't strategize. But you know the word which says we make plans, but God executes. In all thy ways, acknowledge the Lord. So, so, so Jesus instructs us in Matthew that we um, are there to teach people to observe. And that means teaching people to observe means to live the way the instructions of the Bible tells us. Jesus said, whatsoever I commanded in Matthew, and here's what he means, I believe. His commandment is this. So I give you a commandment that you love one another. This is behavior. This is conduct. These are actions. I, I'm commanding you to act in a way of love toward each other. There are some things love won't do. I was sharing this with someone today. If I love you, I'm not going to lie to you. So if I love you and you're doing something outside the boundaries, I have every responsibility in my love to let you know how I see the word of God on that issue. And you may not come around me anymore, but I'm not trying to run you off. I love you enough to share with you, and I don't want to see you um, outside of the will of God because Mark is real harsh. He says, in, in Mark, he says, uh, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. That's what Mark, that's the Mark puts it out. Mark is harsh with it. If, if you're not believed, if, and so you don't want to interfere with folk belief by your lack of good behavior, good morals, good conduct, the way you treat people. We have a responsibility 
to share the gospel. When people ask me what their gift is, I don't know the answer to that. But I know that Jesus said after he was resurrected, you can share, you are to share what you know. That is that Jesus lives and operates in your life. Maybe not the way you want to, but he operates. The old folks are tripped to getting up in the morning, having food to eat, clothes on the back. The simple things the, for us. But there were big things to them and they attributed the ability to have those little things. To God, they will share that on a daily basis. Mark talked about the power given some who are out there witnesses, if that's needed, if tongues are needed. And we see that in, in, in the Acts. And many people believe that what Mark is talking about happened immediately when the church um, uh, was born. And, and thereafter so many years, and then when people, well, the Bible was actually uh, written down in languages, these miracles were needed because the message has the power within itself. That these, they believe that these kinds of miracles were needed in a time when people had no access to study the word for themselves. They believe that all of these things are past. Now, that's the belief of some. If God needs tongues, tongues will come up. If God needs to provide miracles, they will be available. That's in the mind, and that's what that's in the mind of God. Uh, when God knows when uh, to do something miraculous, and he still works in miraculous ways. His wonders to behold. behold. He, he still shows up and shows out. But as far as it relates to our witness, we have to study the word uh, to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman being not ashamed to rightly divide the word of God. We have a responsibility to share Christ and what he's done for us and around us. We have a responsibility to share what we've seen the Lord do, how we, the way we've seen the Lord move. I need to hurry. So that was Matthew and Mark. Luke's come along and he talks about the remission of sin and, and, and repentance and the remission of sin. This is important for us in our responsibility to share the gospel. The sharing the gospel means letting people know that he's real, that he loves them, and that he's waiting for them to come in. When they say, how can I come in? I've been living a life of sin. And the word is admit the sin and stop doing the sin. That's what repent is. And not just stop, but to do the opposite. Yeah, that's why John said, repent, bring forth fruit, start doing work that demonstrates and, and shows that you're no longer where you used to be, where you once were. Yeah, I, Listen, God is able to do all things. But you can't live in the streets any kind of way you want to. Come to the church, get baptized, and keep doing the same stuff against the kingdom. Just, I find that irreconcilable. Repent means to turn from your ways. And I'm not going to have to, I don't have to name the ways. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you what those ways are. So in Luke, he talks about repent. Repentance and the mission of sin should be preached. Repent, God forgives the sin. But so many people want to come to God and not repent. It's, Father, I'm sorry. I've lived the wrong life. I've done some wrong things, God. He's just and righteous to forgive you. Then in John... You notice uh, how John tells us to go, and this is this is powerful. And Jesus said to them, "Peace be unto you, as my Father sent me, even so I send you." This is a powerful word. As the Father sent me, Jesus said, "I'm sending you." It's our responsibility to share the gospel. Jesus said, "I'm sending you uh, to share the gospel," but He breathed on them, said unto them. Receive the Holy Ghost. 
receive the Holy Ghost. And it's understand that uh, our testimony is not out of our flesh. It's out of the Spirit of God within us. We have the responsibility to share the gospel, which gives us a responsibility to know the gospel that we share and to live the gospel that we share. For the best way to share the gospel is not through our words, but through our action. Post-resurrection, Jesus told us generally what all of us have responsibility to do. There are specificities. He may call someone to preach, someone to evangelize, someone to whatever, whatever, whatever. Those things are special. I believe you get those things directly through the Spirit. You may use someone to confirm, but I believe you get that directly to you. I don't let folk tell me, hey, doc, you know you're supposed to be all possible. Nope, don't. The Lord told me to preach. Pastor. That's all he said. You dog, or you know, with your influence, you know, you got all these preachers around you. You a bishop? I is. God didn't say so. I'm just gonna stay right here and pastor, right here and do what I'm doing, because I know He said, "Woe unto you if you preach not the gospel." That's to me. I know He landed me in the pastor's place. I know He gives that call to me. And I don't care what anyone say, what right I've had all kinds of people on all platforms to tell me what, you know, they thought. I know generally what God has said to me. In his word, he says, I have a responsibility to share the gospel. In my personal relationship with him, he did call me to preach and to pastor. He, he had not called me and said, listen, I want you to go be a bishop and have 15 churches in this region. No, none of that. I'm going to stay in my lane. All of us, and I'm, I'm not jealous, envious of anyone who got those callings. In fact, I would be crazy to be jealous of someone who has responsibility for 15 churches. Just am hanging on to one. Were it not for the grace of God, wouldn't be doing that. I'm not envious. I don't need another title. Just, I'm just pastor. I'm satisfied with that. God has blessed me in that place. I just know there are specificities. But generally speaking, you do not have to inquire any longer about what God has called you to do. He's called all of us to be a witness to those who do not know him. Not a witness in word alone, but be ye doers of the word. For a doing testimony is more powerful and more dynamic and more impressive than a lip testimony. And if you have a lip testimony, let your life testify to what your lips have said. Don't let them conflict with one another. Jesus rose went to his followers. Some of them didn't believe. Some of them doubted. Jesus says to them, you have a responsibility to share the good news about the love of God that if accepted through Jesus Christ, believing that he died for your sin and was raised for your justification, you shall be saved. And not condemned. If you heard this message. We thank God for you. And, and let's say you heard this message. And you've been. Pondering. Whether you want to give your life to Christ or not. If you believe. The good news. There's no, nothing else to do. But give your life to Christ. And then share. The love of the mercy and the grace of God to others. God bless you. If you want to give your life to Christ, you can do that. Now, I do it this way, and, 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 and I ask you to do this. I ask you to repeat after me. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I believe and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my dead, buried, and resurrected Savior. I ask Jesus, come into my heart, own me as his child, 
Amen. If you've done that, if you've confessed with your, if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. I welcome you to the household of faith. We thank God for you. Let's go to the website, our website. Let us know that you confessed Christ. You need to be baptized, and we'll work that out and arrange that for you. If you're a person who already been baptized and you want to take up your responsibility to witness for Christ, you can do that. You want to join this church family, you too go to the website and give us your contact information. And we'll be glad to take you into this fellowship. God bless you. God keep you. That's our prayer.